everybody. I'm Ann Louise Gittleman, and I'm here to say that parasites may be making you fat, they may be making you sick, they may be making you tired, and latest studies suggest that one out of three of us may be carrying one or more parasites in our system. But the good news is that when you go on a parasite cleanse, many individuals can lose up to 22 pounds in as short a period of time as two weeks. Now, I've been in the parasite business for a very long time, and I call myself an accidental activist because about 40 years ago, I walked into a classroom in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where an 84-year-old, very wise teacher told the entire class that eight out of ten of them may be infected by one or more parasites. In those days, Dr. Parcells recommended a milk cleanse. She felt that milk was worm bait, and if you took milk every two hours with a special herbal formula, you would be able to release the two particular parasites, and you would feel better almost immediately. So being the good student that I was after the class, which did occur in February of 1974, I went back to my home state of Connecticut, did the parasite cleanse, and found that it made the biggest difference ever in my life. I've also suffered from lots of blood sugar abnormalities at that point, had a problem with my skin, couldn't sleep at night. All of those merely vanished in one week of the milk diet cleanse that she suggested. And then I decided that I was such an evangelist with having such great results, I would turn on everybody in my home state of Connecticut. So in those days in West Hartford, Connecticut, we had everybody doing the milk cleanse. And you can't believe the kind of results we got back then, which was in the 70s. We had individuals that had intestinal issues. We had individuals with skin issues, individuals that were coming down with autoimmune problems, individuals with rheumatoid arthritis, individuals with aches and pains and all kinds of maladies. And interestingly enough, whether it was the parasites that were creating it or it was a byproduct of being an opportunistic infection, many individuals got well, were able to lose weight or even gain weight. Parasites seem to do their harm in various sundry ways. Number one, they make your body exceedingly acidic. Number two, they're able to secrete certain catabolites known as indols that are very toxic and make your organs very sluggish. So they're very tough on the liver, they're tough on the kidneys, and certainly very tough on the intestines intestinal tract. Last but not least, they seem to precipitate a yeast problem. So many times when you think you have candida or fungus, it could be a problem with giardia. Now I learned many, many years ago that parasites are also known as the great masqueraders. So for example, if you think you're coming down with a problem like seizures, God forbid. Many, many times it also could be a situation where you've eaten something that is contaminated with pork tapeworm and it may be an, an insisted pork tapeworm that is near your brain. We've seen that happen on many occasions. I've had individuals who think they have an ulcer only to find that a trip to China has infected them with Ascaris lumbricoides, which is roundworm that actually masquerades as an ulcer. We've had other individuals with a particular type of amoeba where they found that they had rheumatoid arthritis when they got rid of the amoeba, either through some kind of medicinal program or natural herbs and spices, they were able to get rid of their rheumatoid arthritis. So as far as I'm concerned, every mysterious disease under the sun may have a root in the parasites. Let me just read you one of the uh, symptom, symptoms, uh, symptom lists that I put together, which is an actual quiz that appeared in a national magazine over 10 years ago. Here are the symptoms to look out for. Number one, see if you check this off. Intestinal problems such as constipation, diarrhea, or gas are an intermittent combination of diarrhea and constipation. That can probably be a situation where you may have ingested some toxic water, you may have picked up a little Giardia problem, God forbid it could have been Cryptosporidium or any other kind of parasite which are alive and well in this country. We've identified 130 different types of parasites and the problem is they're very difficult to find in stool samples unless you do a purge stool sample, which has become exceedingly difficult to do in this day and time because the ingredient that we used to use, which was a phosphate soda, is exceedingly salty and it's now forbidden by the FDA. So years ago when we tested and used to send our purge stool samples to the lab, we were getting a much, much better positive result. Nowadays, we do random stool samples and you can't really find anything unless you're starting to pull the parasites down into your system. They can be hiding in the upper part of the intestines or even in the bowel lumen. 
So it's not as easy to test for these little buggers as it is to actually treat them prophylactically and do a parasite cleanse once, twice, even four times a year according to the seasonal change. So intestinal symptoms would be one of the most common symptoms. Joint or muscle pain, another common symptom. Difficulty sleeping or nighttime teeth grinding. Many times you'll find children that are teeth grinders. Oftentimes those children are harboring pinworms or even little threadworms and we find if we give them a little remedy like your Zymex 2 from Standard Process within two to three weeks there's no more teeth grinding and the sleep is through the night. I've also found that a lot of bedwetting can be related to a parasitic infestation. So parasites again are alive and well and those are not just ants in the pants of those hyperactive little children. It could actually be a situation where there are worms. Now, frequent infections, including yeast infections that I've mentioned before and colds, very often times Giardia can manifest as yeast and it's very difficult to tell the difference under the microscope. Anxiety, nervousness, or depression is oftentimes related to toxoplasmosis, which is one of the most common parasites that we find in the country today. Toxoplasmosis, Blastocystis hominis, the two biggies that many people seem to be harboring. And these parasites do not they're not prejudiced. In other words, they're equal opportunity infestators. They're invaders, and they don't care if you're wealthy, if you're poor, if you're rich, if you're a Republican, if you're a Democrat. They can infest all of us. I have treated movie stars. I have treated the rich and famous. I've treated, treated everyday individuals. I've treated our janitors. I've treated our street people. I've treated an enormous amount of people because all of us are exposed to these little buggers because our immune system has become a little weaker over the years and because of the toxic assault that we are exposed to. I've even treated a whole ballet company that went to Leningrad, which was known as Giardia City back in the day. So these things, regardless of who you are and what stage and status of life you are, really have no boundaries. Now, dark circles around or under the eyes is a classical symptom. Whenever I see somebody with dark circles under the eyes, I immediately think of parasite issues and problems with the kidneys. Acne, eczema, hives, or other skin conditions. Oftentimes, the skin is one of the first organs to show the deleterious effects of parasites because of the toxic overload created by the liver as well as the kidneys. When I first went on my program many years ago, the first thing that I saw really affect me was the fact that my, my uh, skin cleared up. I used to have very, very sensitive skin with little acne breakouts. I went on the parasite cleanse and there was no more of that. Now, last but not least, are sensory disorders such as vertigo, brain fog, or poor concentration. All of those can be affected by parasites that affect the nervous system deleteriously, can be affected by all kinds of things, whether they be tapeworm, whether they be roundworm, whipworm, threadworm, or even flukes, which many of my people seem to pick up when they're on different types of locales, when they're in certain exotic locales, even when they go on a cruise. Now, interestingly enough, I'm getting ready to go on a cruise. So when everybody thinks about what the ports of call are going to be, I think of parasites. And I always come supplied with the proper, the proper, I would say, ammunition. So I'm going to take my colon cleansing kit with me, which I have helped formulate with the Unikey developer, James Templeton. I'm going to be taking two parakeet before each meal and a little bit of Verma Plus three times a day. These were formulated based on my studies with my original teacher, Dr. Hazel Parcells, who taught us how to formulate according to the pH, so we're not just throwing in the kitchen sink. I'm also going to be taking my formulas because they have been bequeathed to us with two other parasitologists that I had the pleasure and honor of studying with and going into their labs and looking at their microscopes. And that would be Dr. Herman Bueno, may he rest in peace, who is a World Health Organization parasitologist, and Dr. Lucretia Dowell out of Mesa, Arizona, who was an army nurse in World War II and taught me that the only way that you could diagnose these things was through a purge stool sample, and it was usually after the fourth to twelfth purge stool sample that you could find something. So these things are mysterious. They're hitchhiking in your body, they're taking your proper nutrients, and the reason that a lot of people can't lose weight is because they're always hungry. It really affects blood sugar. So whenever I see an individual that can't lose weight, besides thinking of the thyroid and the problems with the gallbladder, I also think of parasite problems, and that would probably be your tapeworm, 
your roundworm, as well as issues with amoeba. When I see individuals that can gain weight, I always think of threadworms or roundworms. So regardless of what your situation is, parasites may be impacting you. And it's the first level of toxicity that we really need to deal with because according to the researchers and the people that I have met over the years, by the year 2050, the entire world, or at least half of the entire world, is going to be infested with one or more parasites. So it's not a real hidden invasion anymore. It's up and coming. Most of us have gone into the heavy metal arena. We're concerned about mold. We're concerned about, we're concerned about glyphosates. We're concerned about nano aluminum, concerned about EMFs. All of this take a toll, but none of them are as immunosuppressive as the good old fashioned parasites. Now, the ones that are the most common today in this country, as I may have mentioned, but I'll mention it again, is one called Blastocystis hominis. Blastocystis was actually first identified as a yeast. It was a kind of fungal infestation. And then we found under the microscope that it actually morphed into a protozoa, so it's now considered to be pathogenic. Individuals that have issues with their sinuses, that have issues with their circulation, with breathlessness and all kinds of mysterious gray arenas usually have a problem with blastocystis. We also see it with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. thyroiditis. So Hashi's may also be a manifestation, as well as any other autoimmune illness, of the inability of the body to fight off the parasites as best it can. Now the foods that I use, besides the different formulas that we use at least four times a year, and that would be my colon cleansing kit, are going to be cran water, number one. The reason that I have been so in love and so in awe of the cranberry juice is because it was used by the Native Americans to actually digest parasites. It was a secret that was handed down to me from my mentor of so many years ago. The cranberry itself has four different digestive enzymes and is able to digest parasite body, so to speak. It has a protease type enzymatic action. So taking your cranberry every day is a good way to get the lymphatic system flowing to help digest the parasites. The other antiparasitic foods are foods that are high in zinc, like pumpkin seeds. So you should be eating pumpkin seeds on a daily basis. Light roasting or toasting is perfectly acceptable. Besides the pumpkin seeds, we're looking at garlic, mugwort tea, some of the herbs and spices like thyme, as well as some turmeric and cloves. Those are some of the best antiparasitic herbs and spices and foods known to man. So having said all that, I want to tell you that I've had clients that have lost up to 22 pounds in two weeks using this program in our parasite diet. And of course, all of that is in my book. Guess what came to dinner? This is the book you should all be getting. Now this book was first written in 1991, and then I updated it in early 2003, I think it was, and this is still an underground bestseller. Everything I wrote back then is not only true, today, but it will be true in the next 10 to 15 years because parasites are still an issue that doctors don't recognize, they don't observe, they don't look for, and they certainly don't diagnose because if you don't recognize something exists, you're not going to ask about it. Traditional blood tests don't really find them. Stool tests are inaccurate. So going on a program that is using something as traditionally based as my, my colon cleansing kit is probably the way to go. Now the reason this is so successful, more so than most anything else on the market, which has been a kind of a copycat version of this original program, is that it contains a very special herb known as Centauri. And Centauri is able to release the hooks and suckers from some of the hookworms and the threadworms as well as the tapeworms from your system so that when people use the program they see all kinds of things being eliminated on a daily basis. So I suggest that at least twice to four times a year, and I'll say it again, you should be doing a parasite cleanse. I'm also suggesting that during the full moon cycle, there's a five-day window of two days before the day of and two days after the full moon when the parasites can become emboldened and enlivened again. That's when you should take another course of this treatment. <coughs> now, as my voice starts to go, I'm going to see if there are any questions that I can now answer. Questions, please. Uh, do water filters help 
to keep the parasites out. Do water filters help? Yes, indeed they do. A water filtration system of point that will block uh, infectious organisms up to 0.5 microns is very important for parasites. Very good question. Water filtration is the way that you block these things from coming through your tap water. And what water filter shall I buy? The only one I recommend is Clean Water Revival, CWR Enviro. Other questions, please? Any tests available? The tests are basically, for those of you that need to see documentation, the tests are good, but basically not to, totally accurate, because there are 130 parasites, they don't test for 130. So the ones that I like are the complete GI panel that we offer through unikeyhealth.com. Next, please. Nice and loud, so I can hear I was you. late watching this video. Um, I love sushi. Should I be eating sushi? You were late <laughs> watching this video. Should you be eating sushi? No, not if you don't want worms. If you want worms, go eat it. Because I cannot tell you how many of my clients have come to me eating sushi that have a bunch of sushi worms, and they're little microscopic, little problematic, they look like little thread worms that affect the intestines, especially ap the appendix. So whenever I hear of somebody getting an emergency appendicitis, I immediately think of worms, especially the sushi worm. So if you are going to eat sushi, as many of you still will, you've got to use a whole lot of wasabi and then follow up with a little parakeet and verma plus. Questions, please. So I believe that most children, as well as adults, actually are parasitic. And there's a particular formula that we like for the kids that I may, may have mentioned to you previously, which is called Zymex 2. Taking Zymex 2 two twice a day is very important for kids to remain calm in school. It'll get rid of their lack of focus. You'll see that they're very non-hyperactive anymore. And then the Zymex 2, which is so important for overall health, has the ability to digest these little parasites, particularly the pinworms and some of the larger infestations. When I was growing up in West Hartford, Connecticut, we had a, um, he was a pediatrician. His name was Dr. Leo Litter. May he rest in peace, Dr. Leo Litter. And he wrote all kinds of treatises on pinworms and children's hyperactivity. He noted the kids that were pulling their hair, picking their nose, eating ice, eating dirt, were all susceptible to pinworms. So he gave them all kinds of natural pinworm medications and found that all of their symptoms were able to abate. This was back in the 60s, back in the 70s. And to this day, I think of Dr. Leo Litter when I think of all these children. Years ago, pedi pediatricians used to recommend the, the little scotch tape test at night. And you can read about this, of course, in my book, Guess What Came to Dinner. And that was a very, very uh, visual and graphic test to really figure out if a child was infested with pinworms. And if that was the case, you had to do a real cleanup of the entire house, the entire family, as well, of course, as the bathrooms and the sheets. So, Ms. so Dr. Litter, wherever you are, I'm holding you in high, high esteem, and I thank you for all your good work. Is, Question. Is someone breastfeeding uh, able to do the cleanse? Is somebody breastfeeding able to do the cleanse? I never recommend any kind of herbs to be used for anybody that's doing that's breastfeeding. But what I would recommend is that Zymex 2 from Standard Process. I think that would be very natural because it's just enzymes made from figs as well as almonds. So I think something very natural like that would be very helpful. A lot more garlic, a lot of the thyme that I mentioned, a little bit of cloves, and even a little bit of mugwort tea, maybe one to two cups a day, will keep the little worms away. I have bloating and gas. Could I have parasites? Of course, if you have bloating and gas that has not abated, regardless of what you do and what food sensitivity tests you have done or whether you've done any kind of elimination diet, you can all be infested with one or two kinds of parasites, even more. Because what the testing showed in the American Journal of Tropical Medicine and hygiene is that many of us are harboring one to four different varieties of parasites and there was a sample testing that was done out of 3,000 individuals. So what I'm going to suggest to you is that if you are harboring any of these parasites they can be having, you can have problems from your GI tract and it can expand to the entire body. It's not just the GI tract and it can affect your liver, your eyes, your lungs. Some parasites pass through the lungs on their way down to the intestinal tract. So it's really up to you to be 
preventative and proactive. That's what I want to say. You need to be proactive and do a parasite cleanse one to four times a year. The reason I like this rather than all the other stuff that you see marketed online these days is because we deal with the babies, the microscopic vampires, as well as the larger parasites. You can't always see what's coming out, but you sure will feel the difference. Less bloating, less gas, less diarrhea, less intermittent constipation and diarrhea. Question. I wake up during the night with gas and muscle aches and pains. Could this be parasites? I wake up during the night with muscle aches and pains. Could this be parasites? It can always be parasites. It may be something else as well. But I would suggest that if you're waking up any time between 1 and 3, which is usually liver time, there's a good chance that there could be an overload on your liver, which could be due to parasite toxicity, because these things are fruitful and they multiply, and the organ that takes the biggest hit is always the liver. So if you have elevated liver enzymes, people, if you have a fatty liver, if you've got any of these preconceived conditions or pre or prejudice or situations that are already in your system, you may be harboring one or more parasites and you may be giving your body a hospitable environment in which these things can be more prolifer they can proliferate. So the, so it's very important to deal with your liver and I, I want to emphasize that greatly. When I was first in class so many so many years ago, we always checked what the liver was, and we used to find out through our energy medicine evaluation that the liver was always overactive, and that's because of the added toxicity that the parasites were making and doing in your system. I mean, they're, they're, they're fruitful, they're multiplying, they have babies, they travel from organ to organ, they can be exceedingly toxic, and they can settle into your system and really pop up to life when your system is a little uh, immuno in immunocompromised. So it's so important to do this on a regular basis. Years ago also when I was the director of nutrition at a detox clinic in San Diego, we learned that if you're ever going to do a testing for parasites, you do it around the full moon because that's when they become more activated. And that's from all the old herbalists that I really res respect and honor. A couple more questions. Can parasites be transmitted through sex? Can, tran <laughs> can parasites be transmitted through sex? Yes, that's, that's a yes. And I talk about, I'll talk about this in a little bit more graphic detail in Guess What Came to Dinner, which is why I'm insisting that all of you who have not read the book reread re the revised and updated edition. So should I cleanse now or wait till the next full moon? So this is what I would suggest that you do. Get yourself some My Colon Cleansing Kit. Get the two ingredients that are part of that kit, which is specifically the Verma Plus for the large ones and the parakeet for the babies and the microscopic parasites. And I would suggest that you do a course of treatment. After you're finished with the course of treatment, two weeks on, five days off, two weeks on, five days off, two weeks on, five days off. Then, on the next following month, whenever you do the five-day full moon is when you follow up on the detoxification and the maintenance. That's for maintenance only, is the five-day five uh, full moon. My daughter has Hash Hashimoto's. Is My this, daughter has Hashimoto's. Is this good for her? This is excellent for your daughter, especially the parakeet, very specific for problems that could be underlying the Hashimoto's. And if it's not the direct cause, it could be a contributory cause. So we want to reduce the toxic load as much as possible to allow the system to really operate at full, full strength. A couple more questions. Can skin breakouts be parasitic? Can skin breakouts be parasitic? Indeed they can because your skin is an eliminative organ. It's considered a third kidney. Anytime you've got strange breakouts, whether it's acne, whether it's uh, some kind of rash, other, whether it's kind of redness on your skin, and including problems that people have with rosacea, which is a lack of hydrochloric acid, by the way, it can all be connected to parasites. Those individuals that have an A blood type are more prone to parasitic infestation than other blood types, by the way, which is an interesting factoid that I explained and expound upon in more detail in Guess What Came to Dinner. So I guess my question to all of you is, guess what came to dinner? Is it going to be parasites in your health or is it going to be total wellness? So for more information, please visit me at annlouise.com. Pick up one of your 
my colon cleansing kits at your earliest convenience and know that I will be cruising and I will say once again, adios amoebas.